All right, we are live. Welcome to the Team, Team Carter Family, Family Adventures podcast. podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Jen. And I'm David. Welcome. And uh, we are joining you from uh, Team Carter Family Studios, the illustrious studios here in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Um, I have some tea in my favorite bear mug. But he doesn't really like the tea that I bought. I have this green tea that I... We just have... We used to have an expansive tea collection. And now it's a really extensive tea collection. Now all we have is this green tea. Inflation, right? We got green Inflation. tea and English breakfast. And those are great, but I... We'll talk about that in a minute, too. But now we have this giant, like, war chest of green tea. <laughs> and that's the only thing we have. Because I'm tea. like, we should probably drink all this green tea before we start on something else. I don't know if you think it's green tea, but we still have blueberry and... Spice orange chai, spice orange. And, oh, it's wonderful. Just, yeah, now it's just like I, I might as well go out and chew on a tree leaf. Is what it feels like. Yeah. Um, anyway, but I'm enjoying the hot water. So I found this new show, and now y'all know we bounce around for random topics, but I found this new show that I started watching called Night Sky um, on Amazon, and it is this old couple finds a portal to another planet I'm, I'll lose Jen as soon as I say that <laughs> I'm gone in <laughs> in their cellar like in their outbuilding up under their outbuilding in the cellar and um, they are they, it's it's got um, J.K. Simmons and uh, you know from from you know Juno J. Jonah Jameson does he play a funny role or a serious role it's a serious role and then um, Sissy Spacek is his wife. You might not know her right off, but if you saw her, you'd be like, oh, yeah, that lady. I would take a little break there. We're back. Um, so, yeah, that's my... Uh, the movie. My new TV show Your that I was watching. new TV show, right. Um, I had to turn off our TV there. There's the, We have a TV in our bedroom, and we have a Google pic- Pictures account hooked up to it, and... <clears throat> It just picks random photos and displays them kind of like a rolling photo album. So I had to I'll look at random pictures of stuff, but I had to turn that off. Um, so today is Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day. Thank you for everyone past and present who has served our country and is currently serving. And to those who've made the ultimate sacrifice, thank you. Why are you looking at me? I don't know. I haven't made any sacrifices for our country. I'm looking at you because I want you to be included in the conversation. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, we, neither one of us, have served in the military, but we have lots of family members who have and who currently are. So We're very thankful we're very grateful for your service and grateful. And the, the family members of, uh, of active duty service members often sacrifice, you know, make significant sacrifices themselves. Mm-hmm. So we and appreciate for their families. Yeah. Um, so we're very appreciative of that. In, in Memorial Day is not necessarily a happy day. Um, it is a time to remember when uh, for, for those that passed away. Um, which it's hitting me because I'm, I'm scratching my arm. I don't think it shows up on the thing. I don't think it makes a difference. But um, today's not a happy day. But it is a, a day to remember, nonetheless. So we're appreciative of that. Just want to say that and vocalize that appreciation. So, what has been going on with us? Nothing super duper exciting. I'll be hundred percent honest with you. Um, so we are about three quarters of the way. So we figured out there's a certain amount of listeners we need to get before we can start running ads. A set number of listeners we need to get before we can start running ads. We figured out based on the first seven or eight podcasts that we did our per listener our, our per listener gained number for each podcast that we did it was like 2.3 or something 2.2 so figure out basically we need to do uh, to hit the number of listeners unique listeners that we need to be able to start running ads we needed to do it was like 18, 19 uh, and you might be thinking like 24, why are the Carters selling out to buy ad space 100% we are selling out because we are trying to generate passive income. We are trying... So we have shamelessly, shamelessly, unashamedly... I'm not ashamed. Uh, we are trying to generate passive income. Right. So 
And if, if that offends you, I don't really care. And, well, you can say it in a nicer way, but we appreciate you if you're listening, first of all. And second of all, if we do get that passive income, then that's more um, content we can create for our listeners and our viewers. Mm-hmm. So, and the whole point of this is to have family adventures. One, because we enjoy them. Two, we're making memories with our family. Three, we're inviting other families, you guys, listeners and viewers, to come along with us on our adventures. Um, and so that it inspires you guys and encourages you to make your own memories with your family. Yeah. Where some people don't want to physically go to all these locations, but they want to live or can't, right? And they want to live vicariously through us. So we appreciate you if you're here coming along with us. Yeah, it always amazes me the number of people who listen to these things. Um, and you never know. Same thing with our YouTube videos. You never really know who's going to listen to stuff or watch it. We have a lot of video, uh, of viewers from Italy, surprisingly. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Italia. If, if there's any Italians listening out there, buongiorno. Um, if not, then that's how you say hello in Italian. There's a, le- there's a language lesson for you right there. That's about as far as our Italian goes. Uh, you know, we do speak Spanish, and I think Spanish and Italian have some pretty strong similarities. I bet you I could, if someone spoke slowly to me in Italian, I could understand 75% of what was being said. I bet you. Um, We'll test that theory. We'll go to Italy one day, and we'll test that theory. We'll let you know how that works out. I feel like I would understand more Italian than I would Portuguese. Oh, yeah. Portuguese is like, I feel like I should know what you're saying, but but I just don't. We found that out in Brazil. Like one day we were in Brazil. All right, so our AC unit went out today. Yeah. In our house. Man. And before, I might, not before, but in the past, I would have said, let's just, I don't know, wait a day. Maybe the AC unit will start working again. And that is just not realistic. No. So, by the time it reached, like, 79, 80 degrees in the house, we were like, okay, there's a problem. It's blowing air, but it's not getting cold. There's probably a problem. So... I just would have went back to work and focused on other things until Jen made me call somebody. Well, we're so grateful that whoever you called today was able to come out and um, and fix it. Who'd you call today? I don't even remember. Okay, well, bless that guy who came out on Memorial Day weekend and fixed the AC. Yeah, he literally came out like an hour after I called him. Yeah, it's running, so So, praise Jesus. um, Let me me just say this, though. Uh, I have no complaints about this guy, but the cost... So, it was low on Freon and had to replace the capacitor. The cost of refrigerant, the 410 or R410, I think it's called, is, is... You talk about... We mentioned the word inflation... The cost of refrigerant has gone up so much. So you can buy the refrigerant off of Amazon right now, um, and it's like a thousand dollars to do it yourself. Yeah, you could do it. I don't know that I would necessarily. I'm not recommending that. Talk to a trained professional. Whatever, whatever. You don't you don't want to make it worse. You don't want to um, break it. But it's a thousand dollars for a ten pound. What's your phone? It's, it was a thousand dollars for a basically a, a um, Jen has her phone on super lockdown mode here. Well, because I don't want notifications or anything while we're doing this podcast. Um, I turn everything back on. <laughs> David gets so annoyed with me and my phone. It's just you know the apps aren't where you where he puts them on his phone. You know, for some reason, my phone doesn't recognize my face. So, you know, you have to punch everything in manually. It's, it's a whole thing. Refrigerant. It's a whole thing. Refrigerant. That's okay. Refrigerant. Refrigerant. Well, it is fixed, and it's it's cooling off the house now, and we're so appreciative because, you know, South Carolina summers, you just can't play around with that. It's not going to get colder. It's just not. It's going to be humid and sticky, and you're going to have to do something or suffer. So, I'm grateful. Refrigerant. Refrigerant. I'm going to keep saying it until... Uh, not R22, 14. R310. 
30 a month. Oh, it was like a thousand dollars for a ten or twenty pound. Uh, so he quoted you. Looks like a propane tank full of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And whereas a year or two ago it was like two hundred bucks, three hundred wow. bucks. So. And so. Just like everything else, the price is going up. So we were, you know, I think two and a half, three pounds low. You know, you know, anyway, it was it was more than I was expecting to spend on. A, and it was a back on Monday afternoon, sir. Correct. No. no, no. It's just a leak. A leak. There's a leak somewhere. Anyway, part of being a homeowner, there's a leak somewhere. But he put the stop stop leak with, with the dye in it. And it's this fluorescent dye where you can put these glasses on and see where it's leaking. You know, you should have dropped another couple of pounds and three or four hundred bucks later with a refrigerant. So. But we have a cool house. Well, the house is cooling down. Praise the Lord. And um, what are you going to do? Just not, you know, have a hot house? I mean, that's not really option well we're thankful that we had family members that we escaped to their house with their ac that works and so the kids could at least hang out inside and um, so so i was here at the house just kind of sweating sweating while he, <laughs> while he did his thing outside and you know i don't want to get in his way i want to just let him do his thing i was a service tech at one point in time in a, in a past life so to speak and so i know the last thing that service tech really wants is you know, the homeowner or the customer. You babysitting. Hanging over your shoulder. He, yeah. While he does his work. It's the last thing. I sort of really was. Just leave him alone. Let him do his thing. So you just hang out and checked on him. Sweating house. While he... I, I sat on the back porch and the front porch. Okay. Listen to a book on tape. And just kind of, you know, enjoyed my time. Um, the house is really quiet without you guys here. The house is aggressively quiet without y'all here. No, he missed us. I did. I'm not used to being here without y'all. Uh, I was like, well, what do I do? I didn't want to get too far into like you know cleaning something or straightening something because it was so dang hot. Um, so I, I cooked I cooked to the kids dinner at the grandparents' house. Thank you, grandparents, for letting us come over and chill for a little bit. Yeah, they rode bikes in their driveway, and I cooked dinner. And because again, yeah, like you said, I didn't want to turn on the oven or turn the dryer or do anything like that yeah. while the house was eighty degrees. Yeah, I feel like that's a it's like an old timey thing where <laughs> mom, mom doesn't bake in the middle of the day because it makes the house too hot. It does. It really does for whatever reason. In our house it makes it a lot. Yeah. Um. You know I'm amazed that you guys find this stuff interesting. <laughs> it's just incredible that you guys that you guys find this stuff interesting because this is just our life. This is just our day to day. You know ridiculousness. I fixed my truck this weekend. All right, so I'll take on my truck. This is a good thing to talk about because I. I am, so Jen and I have had many discussions about things that make us different, things that set us apart. And, uh, you know, Jen and I don't, don't fight. We do have disagreements. We do have disagreements. Um, but neither one of us. We don't have screaming matches. No, we've never had screaming matches. We've never, you know, somebody needs to go away for a day or two. We've never had to do that never needed time apart but and we're not perfect people not by a long we're not perfect people we do both make mistakes we both try really hard to um apologize for our mistakes the same day we make them and communicate about things even when communication isn't so great (laughs) we still try and communicate um because that's important and i don't know i we pray for our marriage a lot yeah we do so, um, that's important, <laughs> I think. And now that one of us is, is really particular about very much, you know, we have, I don't, I, don't, I was honestly trying to name something that Jen is really particular about, and if, if it is something, <laughs> I don't really know, or it's just not something that I have encountered yet or just haven't found something maybe that's just really good that you and I both aren't sitting around like man what really irritates me about my spouse Mm. it's probably a good sign it's probably a good sign you probably shouldn't do that the only thing that I'm focusing a lot on that maybe you have other issues (laughs) that we should talk about um that's a whole other that's a whole nother which I guess we could get into a little bit the only thing that I am relatively particular about what is it Jen is his car 
my car. With small children, it's it's just his thing. It's it's our fourth child, his car. My my car is now and before you And the viewer is picturing, well does he have a Tesla? Well does he yeah, have a yeah, Porsche? What yeah, does before he have? you jump into conclusions, I have <laughs> I, I love my car. What is he have? So appreciative of it. And I don't want anything else. And so I take really good care of it because I want it to last a long time. I have a 2003 Toyota 4Runner. That was generously sold to us by friends who also love that car. Mm -hmm. And God bless Peter and Karen Tetrov who let us buy that car from them because it is still running. We still Mm -hmm. have it. We've probably replaced so much on it because of its age. Not really. But it was well taken care of before we got it. It was well taken care of. We really, I, I had the air fixed. Uh, the AC went out. I had a radiator replaced. Routine stuff because of like mileage. You know, yeah. you gotta, I mean, I've, you got to do the tires. You I got a new set the, of tires, yeah. new set of rotors. I mean, nothing, nothing insane. Um, so I've had it for five. Has it been five years now? We got it in two thousand sixteen. Two thousand eighteen. We got it. Really? Yeah. Are you sure? Like the beginning of twenty eighteen. Okay. The end of 2017. If you visit our blog, teamcarter.team, which is still on WordPress, you can look up in our archives of when we got that car. I think it's entitled A Christmas Miracle because it indeed yeah, was, it was a Christmas, Christmas miracle. 2017, 2018. Anyway, we got the car at the beginning of, in the 2017, beginning of 2018. I remember because the car needed some stuff done to it. It had been taken really good care of but at that point it was a it was 2003 and it was 2017 I mean you know it had some age on at that point so it just needed some things so I had some projects to do it had a couple of dash lights on that weren't anything significant really but so um I did several things to it cleaned it up really really well um just some maintenance type stuff the um the the supports for the lift gate in the back and for the hood we're wearing out so I replaced those um, steam cleaned it really well got it really nicely detailed which is probably time to do something like that again but anyway so my car is like our our our, our fourth child and I just have a theory or, or a philosophy or whatever maybe I learned it from my parents or whoever but if you take care of your things your things will take care of you and this summer, this past summer, I had the AC fixed, and I had a catalytic converter replaced, and it was, it was a good bit of money. Let's just say that it was a good bit of money, not quite as much as the car was worth, but not too, not too much less than that either. Um, it's about half what the car's worth. But you can't get a car for. But yeah. <laughs> that amount of money. But in in the scale of things, I could not have bought a car as nice as what I have for the amount that it would have cost to fix it. So I fixed it. And now it's good for another you know, 150,000 miles or so, 100,000 miles. Uh, and so it's got like 220,000 miles on it now. I plan to run it until the wheels fall off. <laughs> until it doesn't run anymore. Until it doesn't run anymore. And it being a Toyota and it being the V8, it's the same V8 that they put in, in the Land Cruiser. And those are, you know, legendarily dependable and reliable and, and robust and sturdy. Now, if we could dream for like a half a second here, not that we're getting a new car because we waver back and forth between should we get a new car, should we not? And by new, I mean used, but like new to, for us. <laughs> um, but if you haven't looked up the Toyota Takozilla, that is purely just dreaming for David and I when we're, you know alone and retired or something it's toyota's first maybe it's not their first but it's their camper no it's not their first it's It's not their first it's it's an old school throwback it's made to look like one of the old uh camper top trucks that you add onto a truck from the Mm -hmm. 70s Mm -hmm. onto a a new tacoma but it's got the same 70s paint scheme it's steel not fiberglass and it's steel and so they were talking about how this thing's gonna last forever and keep on trucking and it's way more stable and Mm -hmm. all these things and it's for you know fits two people comfortably and so we were like man that would not fit our family right now but man that's cool so 
my car's like a fourth child. That's why the maddest that Jen has seen me, the maddest that I have been in the last year, was when our three-year-old at the time, now four, took a box cutter to the driver's seat of my car. Um, he thought he was helping. Bless his heart. I don't understand how he was helping, but he was just being... I, I didn't do that to my dad's vehicles, but I did similar things. Like? Um, I hid... I buried my dad's set of keys in the planter outside in the front yard <laughs> because I said I thought it was going to grow a car. Buried it, keys were gone. He lost them. He had church keys. And in his words, he had the keys to death, hell, and the grave on that key ring. And I buried them. They were gone. That's we He found them a year later or so. That's hilarious. <laughs> you just forgot. You forgot in that five-minute time span that, oh, yeah, I buried them right there in the planter. I was five, six, you know, who knows? That's hilarious. Um, I, uh, that's on the same level with that. Well, Grady also buried one of his favorite toy cars. He brought it to this playground that had a bunch of mulch. Like, it was, it still had all the wood chips, like, as the, um, what do you call it? To protect the playground. And so, he buried his favorite car somewhere on the playground. And I was like, well, let's help you find it. The girl, and I was getting the girls to help him. Like, let's help Grady find his truck that he buried in the mulch. Well, I couldn't remember where he buried it. I'm like, how do you not remember where you buried it? Was it near the slide? Was it near the swings? Like, this playground's not that big. Where'd you bury it? And he's like, I don't know. He doesn't We never know. found it. So, we were like, he we're, doesn't just, know. we're just going to bless that playground with a, with a fire truck. If anybody finds it, you can have it. <clears throat> so... I'm, I'm taking the opportunities when things do arise with the vehicle to just fix it myself. So I, I let Miriam pump gas the other day when she was at the gas station with me and she let the gas cap off. Well, like, you know, it's, it's a modern enough vehicle to where when you leave the gas cap off, you get the engine light, the engine warning light. And then whenever, for that vehicle specifically, whenever the engine warning light comes on, you get a VSC, you know, the vehicle stability control, and the ABS light comes on. I don't, I don't really know if the vehicle stability control control turns off but it but the light comes on it indicates that it does anyway your your dashboard lights up like a, basically a christmas tree and uh <laughs> and it is it is like stress inducing for me i can't i can't ride i can't just chill i can't roll with that kind of stuff in my life um i, I don't like notifications on my phone gotta fix it now <laughs> I, I just can't i just can't handle it so anyway i spent the weekend Saturday, Saturday doing that. The gas cap was easy enough to clear. I have OB, OD, ODB, OBD, not ODB from the Wu Tang Clan, not that guy, but OBD two reader. Um, then I can clear the 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 gas cap code. That's easy to do. Then the other two, the the, the vehicle stability control light and the ABS light, um, those were on. Those were a little bit more challenging to clear. So. You had to, the code read, it, it, it had lost its zero point calibration. So, um, after lots of YouTubing, I figured out that you had to reset the zero point calibration for, for the vehicle stability control. And what it was, there's a sensor in there that um, turns off the fuel flow when the vehicle, supposed to be, if there's a wreck, the vehicle flips over, turns upside down, turns off the fuel flow. <clears throat> well, it had lost the zero point calibration that told it if it was upside down or not, I think. Um, so I figured out there's there's a hack on YouTube. You take two uh, paper clips, you stretch them all the way out, you put them into pin number four on the top line, pin number seven. This is in the OBD2 connector up under the dash. Put it into pin four on the top one and the pin seven on, on, on the bottom one. So switch the Put, put, put the key in the ignition, switch it to the on position. You have eight seconds to touch the two paper clips together four times. Click, 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 click. That turns on, that that clears the old calibration. And then you turn the key off, turn the key back to the on position. You click the paper clips four more times. Click, 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 click. And that resets the zero point calibration. You turn the key back off, take out the paper clips, crank the vehicle. You have to drive at 25 miles an hour or faster for 10 seconds with the wheel perfectly straight 
to, to, to set the new calibration. That's what I did. And all this you can find on YouTube. That's it was how all you, on YouTube. Wow, that's amazing. It was all on YouTube. And he did it. He fixed it. Yep, so that's, that's fixed for now until the next thing comes up. Problem solver. Problem solvers. Yes. Let's throw back to an old episode of ours. Yes. Um, we actually got our first piece of fan art recently. It's coming in the mail. I was going to reveal it when it comes in the mail. Coming in the mail. It's coming soon in the mail that we will tell you about on the next episode whenever we get this thing in the mail. Mm-hmm. It's going to be awesome. I'm pretty excited to hit it. We're also working on some merch. It's going to be um, some Problem Solvers merch that we'll put up. Um, if you're listening to this on YouTube, it'll be in the in the, the link will be in the description below. If you're listening to this on Spotify or, or, or Anchor or Apple or whatever other platform you get your podcasts on, um, email us at team carter family adventures at gmail.com or go to our website team team um, to, to, to see our merch store is our merch store on we our don't website? have a merch store yet we okay. gotta get on okay. that okay we don't have that yet so just chill raise your hand if you'd like some merch and we'll just hopefully just get that out the brakes for 10 seconds people and we'll get that to you um, it's a work in progress over here it's a work in progress um that was the big thing that I kind of wanted to discuss tonight was talking about getting the AC fixed. Our house is cool again, which is wonderful. So I guess we have a theme right now on this episode of ownership, taking ownership, right? And taking with that, I guess, comes pride in what you own. So taking care of the house, taking care of your car, taking care of your yes. kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ownership being a big thing. Oh, this is what I was going to say about the car finally. It, it's paid off and it's been, it's been paid off for a long time. You know, I don't know if you guys know this right now, but the new the, the, the car market is much like the housing market right now, and that prices are ridiculously high. So if I was to buy, let's even say I bought a late model, you know, not something brand new, something five to six years old, for what I want slash what I need, it's gonna be thirty to forty thousand dollars, and the the monthly payment on a forty thousand dollar vehicle would be close to what our mortgage payment is and dude I just can't if I don't absolutely have to do it I'm just not going to do it I'm just not going to do it if I absolutely had to buy a car right now I say this all the time I would buy like a 2008 Honda Accord if I had to have a car right now that's what I would buy um, a, a late 2000's Honda Accord um, maybe a Toyota Corolla what's the one what's the one up from the Accord um, There's an Accord. Oh, the, the Civic is the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Civic, then the Accord, and the Toyota has the Corolla, and the Camry is a slightly larger. Mm-hmm. But, but I would buy some small car. Um, now, if I had all the money in the world, I would buy the new, and Jen's laughing because she was about to say, Ford's coming out with a totally electrified F one fifty called the Lightning. Tell them what it does. Oh, it's so cool. We're not it's sponsored so cool. by these people, but tell them what it does. Oh, I would drive the crap out of this vehicle. Um, it is fully electric, so it looks just like you know. Look up twenty twenty F one fifty, and it looks exactly the same. It's not like weird, wacky, you know, Cybertruck, anything like that. It looks like an F one fifty, and the there's a couple of different trim levels. The base base trim level, which you may not really be able to get, because it may sell out to fleet to fleet customers, is going to be like forty thousand dollars. It's going to have about two hundred fifty miles of range. It's going to be a very fast truck, like like most electric vehicles are. Um, and and the base base model might not have this, but if I had one, I would definitely have this. It was called Pro Power Onboard, and what this does. It could literally, like, like you, you could charge another electric vehicle with it. It's that powerful. It, it, it can power your whole home. You plug it into your house when you get home. So you get home from the evening, and, you know, you you, you want to charge it overnight. You plug it in, let's say, overnight there's a power outage. Well, the car will reverse flow power into your home and power your entire home. Off your truck. Off of your truck. How cool is that? It can do that for up to three days, they say, with obviously limited usage. You're not going to be running dry for three, you know, three days.
history, so to speak. Um, that is just That's crazy. unbelievably cool. So. so if you have one of those, if you have one of those lightning trucks, please let David just cruise around with you in your vehicle and get all peanut butter and jealous for like 20 minutes and then he'll get it out of his system and then we'll be okay. Or if you would like to make him some fan art, just throwing it out there, all you creative artists out there, make him some fan art of David, David's face, like in a, you know, lightning truck or something. No, if, if somebody makes some fan art Frame of me in a vehicle. Frame it, slap it, if somebody, send it to us. So need, if somebody makes fan art of me in a vehicle, it needs to be in the forefront. That's like my car. Yeah. This is the second forerunner that I've had. That's true. They need to just make a dang electric forerunner. That's so If dear. they announced an electric forerunner, I would have no choice but to buy it. Toyota of America, Toyota of Japan. Here's if a you're qu- listening. Here's a question that we have often wondered. Why doesn't someone make a electric minivan? I think like I, why I why? A few theories. I think because if they thought there was a market for it. You know, they've probably tested, focus grouped, done surveys, polled, and, f- and figured out that there's, that there's just not a big market for it right now. Because, all right, so who, why did Ford start, well, Ford did start with the F-150. Ford started with the Mach-E, which is the new Mustang, which is basically a crossover SUV, which is kind of a weird choice, but whatever. But why is Ford doing the big rollout with the uh, F-150? Because it's guys who buy, now. Don't throw any stones here, people. Here we go. It's guys who buy the F-150, and guys want the newest, coolest, most high-tech, cutting-edge toys. Do they really? Right. Yes. Okay. In general. In general. Now, who buys minivans? Grandmas and moms with kids. Grandmas and moms with kids. Yeah. Moms with kids. Which, hey, I, I love the minivan. I never thought before yeah. kids that I would ever be a minivan mom. I was like, oh, no. Oh no, I'm not. I'm never gonna have a minivan. And guess what, people? We sold out to all the leg room and all the cup holders and the sliding doors because let me tell you, when you have two babies and you're trying to open a four door vehicle to get those silly car seats or get the get the car get the car seat disconnected from the base out of that thing, with you're next to like people in the grocery store parking lot that parked way too close to you, you're like, sliding doors change your life. They really do. Yeah, really. And just, then the kids can get in the car by themselves. Yeah. I and mean, that's a game changer. When the kid can get in the car and buckle themselves. Sorry to pause for a second. But you said when the kid can get in, in the car. When the kid can get in the car by themselves. And they can open the door. Get in the car seat by themselves. Put the seatbelt on. Like it's just amazing. That's like a game changer. So yes. We sold out to get a minivan. Our minivan is also. Praise God. Paid for. And we're keeping that thing <clears throat> until it drives Until under. it's time to get rid of it. So, my point is, the factors that make men buy the newest, coolest, hottest toy are not the factors that make the purchases of minivans buy them. It's convenience, it's reliability. It's not, well, not necessarily impulse, but... like it, it, it's I con- need this minivan right now! It's convenience, <laughs> it's reliability... It's reputation, it's it's ease of use, being the fastest. Nobody nobody buys a minivan because it's fast. People don't really buy minivans because they're high tech. I mean, eh. Eh. there's some features on it. We specifically, again, this is us being weird. We specifically bought the lowest possible trim minivan we could, but the best minivan. Well, in our opinion. In our opinion. Um, I mean, Honda, Toy- Honda, Toyota, they're pretty... They're great. There's, They have some parity there as far as quality. We didn't buy Lemon. We went um, for the Honda Odyssey yeah. of CarMax. But we bought the lowest possible spec, lowest possible trim. I, I'm pretty sure this thing was in a rental fleet. Um, it it's does, from Canada. It's oh, from Canada. Canada. It doesn't have automatic sliding doors. It does have, like, a radio, you know, and heat and air conditioning. Um but you know it doesn't have it does have Bluetooth actually, it does have Bluetooth. Um, I mean, it, it has the things that you expect a modern vehicle to have. But uh, it doesn't have the shades that slide up. Doesn't have the in car vacuum cleaner. Doesn't, doesn't have, have leather seats. seats. Yeah, they're doesn't. not heated. They're not leather. Well, we what we've our our line of thinking was the less bells and whistles this thing has, the less stuff there is to break on it. That's true. Right. So that was kind of our thought with that. Um, and so far, it's worked pretty well. 
But we're so thankful for our car, for our cars, and we're going to drive those until they literally cannot drive anymore. Until it doesn't make sense for us to fix them. That's probably the best way to say that. Until it stops making financial sense to fix them is what we're going to do. And that is our thing. Um, that may not be your thing, and that's okay. I, I have friends who change cars every 34 years. More power to you. Um, that is... I guess we do change cars every three or four years. It's just not really planned. Maybe like every five to seven years. Maybe. So I haven't fixed the box cutter cuts in my seat yet. Any suggestions on how to do that? Like buy some liquid leather and just... I think I just need to take it to Mako and say, what can you do? Buy, buy one of those really cool um, wooden bead seat cover things in the driver's seat and sit on top of that. <laughs> get a seat cover, honestly. Get a seat cover. A, a terrible idea. How about those Hawaiian seat covers? Yeah. Maybe. 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 You can tell I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we'll kind of see where that goes. <laughs> well, maybe I'll just hang on to it and it'll be Miriam's first car when she drives. There you go. She's she's eight now, so it's only it's only twelve, not not so it's only eight years away, right? Yeah. It's only eight years. Stop. From now. That's crazy. It's only it's only as much time of as has already passed in her life has to pass again for her to be driving. Wow. So. Man. NBD. Looking forward to that. That's crazy though. NBD. Start thinking about that. Wow. I know it's wild. Um. Well, I think that's probably just about enough. At 36 minutes and 50 seconds, I want to, if, you, if you've made it this far on the podcast, I want to say congratulations, congratulations. on making it to the super secret uh, post-credit sequence. We're thankful um, for you. Again, I'm just uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stunned and, and pleased that you guys uh, find us as interesting as you do. So what are you grateful for this week? Um, what things in your life are you thankful for um, think about some of those things. Make a list. If you've never done this before, this can be really cool. Ooh, Write down idea. what you are thankful for. Maybe not every day necessarily, but once a month, twice a month, write down the things that you are thankful for and put those things at the forefront of your mind and it, and it will make your day better. And even if you don't feel thankful, do it in this right moment. Do it anyway because you'll start coming up with like, even if you can come up with only like one to three things that you're thankful for, You'll just keep thinking of those things when you when you just start, and then you'll have like a whole list of like thirty things that you're thankful for, whether it's big, small, it doesn't matter. Like, um, yeah. Yeah, leading with gratitude is really really powerful. Mm-hmm. As you take back your own, as you take captive your own thoughts, leading with gratitude is really really powerful. Well, we love y'all. Have a good evening. Peace. <laughs>